Hey everyone, Tim Layton here. Welcome back to the next edition of the Darkroom Diary. <clears throat> and today, I uh, am going to uh, really kind of respond to several emails that I've got in the last couple weeks ab about my ultra large format contact printing setup. You're going to find it's extremely simple, it's highly effective, and um, I think that you can take away um, a really simple setup if that's what you want to do for any size format. I'd use it for ultra large format, but you can use it for 4x5 up to 20x24 and bigger if that's what you want to do. So anyway, there'll be a link to the detailed article uh, below the video and I'll include all the kind of stuff I talk about like dimensions and measurements and links to things and stuff like that. So that's really hard to do in a video. So I create companion articles and that will be directly below the video. So let me show you the setup and uh, make sure you comment below or ask questions. Uh, happy to help any way I can. All right, I am walking over to the printing area here. You'll see uh, this is my wet area over here and this is where I like uh, cut and mount and things like that for uh, like frames and stuff like that. And I've got another project going here for my pictorial whispers projects over here. So um, this is the setup. It is very, very, very simple. So let me walk you through it. I'll start down here. I always keep a whiteboard because I keep notes as I go. Um, I do split grade printing on all my silver prints. And uh, so I use the larger six by six. You'll see why in a minute. I've got a timer because I need very precise times. I've got a manual dimmer uh, tied to this and you'll see that in a minute. I use this uh, M MT912 light meter because I measure light in lux. And once I get that figured out, I can reproduce it for any type of paper like warm tone versus um, like uh, Lupex paper or Amidal paper um, or Lodema paper, I guess it is. And um, in other words, what I mean is silver chloride. So they're a lot slower. So um, I just made uh, the light box. That's just a regular light reflector. There's nothing special about that. You get them at the hardware store. I just took and made a little uh, box here out of white artboard. It was actually scrap board. And you'll see the lamp uh, is just kind of just fits down, you know, in there. And that's a 75 watt uh, floodlight up there. And then I have a hole cut in the bottom. And that's where the multi-grade filters go in. And you'll see I have a little channel in there. And then I just change out the filters as I'm doing the split grade prints or whatever. And um, if you are interested in how I do the split grade printing, I have a little guidebook uh, on that. And you can just go to the website, timlaytonfineart.com slash learn and get that if you're interested. So this is how simple it is. That's all it is. A regular shop light, less than $10. A piece of artboard from Hobby Lobby is like five or $6. A light bulb is, I don't know, a few dollars. The filters are probably, I don't know, uh, 40 or $50, I'm guessing. I can't remember. I've, I've just had them so long. And then I have two sheets of heavy glass. I've actually got a 16 by 20 ultra large format uh, paper negative in here right now. I'm getting ready to print this. So if you want to see this print, uh, make sure you check back in the next episode I'm going to go through, I'm actually making this for a client. Uh, they bought a print and um, this is actually an Elford Warm Tone semi-mat paper negative and I'll be printing that later, like I said, and so you can check that out. I'll, I'll share that here on the channel next. So you got really thick, heavy glass. It can be any, I just wanted it, you know, a little extra heavier because of ultra large format. And all I basically did is, um, made this glass uh, so I can do up to 20 by 24 ultra large format contact prints. You can make it whatever size you want or need. And then I have a little stopper block here where the glass butts up against that. And then this extra little one by two gives you a lip so that this front piece extends 
uh, beyond here so it gives you a surface to lift up, right? And so that's why I did that. And then these are just a couple two by four screwed together. It gets everything out of the way. And then I just slide in the sandwich of the paper negative and the paper when I've got my uh, safe lights on here. And then um, I just take and make the print. And uh, so like right now, uh, the way I've got it dialed in here with this paper negative, I'm getting printing times in the like 10 to 15 second range. And that way I can get uh, D max at that. So that's really ideal. Uh, there's really no dodging and burning required here on this. Uh, I printed this before. It's just a, a beautiful negative and, and very easy uh, to print. And so when you make good negatives, that's the case. And I know the reflections are tough here because of the glass, but uh, I'll, uh, I'll give you a better look at that negative up close whenever I do the next episode. And the distance uh, between the light source and the printing surface is 36 inches. Uh, that's approximately about one meter, something in that range. And the trick is having this dimmer so that you can dial in for each of your processes and then having this light meter, it's gonna be completely dark in the room, no other extraneous light. You just lay that in the middle and you measure the light, you make some test strips. You just kind of figure out through trial and error that like I know for sure that my Ilford warm tone needs uh, 10 lux of light. Uh, and I split grade print that in the six to 10 second range uh, for that, for most negatives. And that gives me a starting point so I can start pretty easy, pretty fast. So <clears throat> that's how it works. I mean, it's really, really simple. It's uh, really probably even more advanced than, than Weston used back in the day. I don't suspect he had a timer. I don't suspect he had a dimmer uh, or a light meter, but it's pretty close to that, right? And I just wanna hopefully show you that you can do a lot. You can make gallery quality, fine art prints with something so simple. It's really about the work. It's about the quality of the negatives that you can create. And then of course, controlling uh, your archival workflow. So anyway, uh, like I said, all the details and specs are in the article that's linked below the video. And if you have any questions, uh, submit them below and I'll see you in the next edition of the Darkroom Diary.